and welcome back and most importantly to each a good day and welcome back to the channel and as you can see here we're looking at the trunk space of our 2019 hellcat and just as in the previous video in which we installed uh, jdi's ghost power system to allow us to en enable and disable the start stop button i made a comment that we would be adding yet another layer of security into this hellcat by installing jdi's uh, ghost lock product and what this does is in a nutshell it allows you to gps track the vehicle as well as remotely disable the vehicle and what you see that comes inside the kit here is the main unit itself kind of the brain box so to speak this is your your tracker also what allows allows you to disable the vehicle you get the associated relay harness for your particular make model of vehicle as well as the relay that then gets plugged into that socket now as you can see just like with their ghost power product everything is set up to use factory connectors everything is nicely wrapped as far as this nice nylon webbing so everything will blend in with the factory harness quite nicely now along with that you get quite a bit of information inside the kit uh, as far as applicable warnings as well as the ability and showing you where you need to go in order to set up your TrackMate account. Now they have an install video which you will gain access to once you purchase the product. There will be an additional card inside the box with a link uh, with an address on it to get you to that video as well as they also have more in-depth videos on jdi's uh, youtube channel that shows you how to go in and configure your alerts and things of that nature within your uh, trackmate account well what we're going to do is look into now gaining access to what we need to gain access to in order to install this particular harness and then get our GPS tracker powered up and starting to signal. Now, I went ahead in ahead of time and set up my TrackMate account. There is a serial number on the back of this unit that you need as part of your activation. Now, one thing that will happen is if you set up your account ahead of time, just like it did to me, it will tell you that in order to complete your activation, you then have to go back into your profile and tell them, put a little check mark in a box that says, yes, I have installed the system. So just looking to save a little bit of time and I at least went ahead and set up my account and, you know, billing preference and the level of uh, package and, sh and stuff that I wanted. Because there are a couple, and you can see them here, there are a couple options on there as far as the type of service plan and if you just google trackmate gps service plans it'll bring you to a link on their website and it will break all of these plans down and the differences between i ended up going with the basic uh, plan uh, it had the options I wanted and premium uh, four and five premium platinum had some options in there that I wasn't going to use in this vehicle. They looked to be more like fleet type options. So it looks like basics had the options of what at least I needed. So I went with that. So what I'm going to do now is look at getting at least the get access to the battery and the connection points we need there. Uh, we also need to see about getting this liner uh, peeled back off the side here. Now their install video looked like they were using a challenge a charger. Uh, this is a challenger, so it's going to look a little bit different. But um, hopefully, what we need access to. I know the battery is in the same spot, and hopefully the module fuel pump control module that we need access to hopefully will be in the same spot their their deinstallation was a little bit different because they had like a piece of plastic trim here you had to lift up and then start removing the clips to get the felt in items out and it's going to be a little bit different in our case so what i'm going to do is clean the trunk out get access into the battery and i'm going to see about what it's going to take to, for us to take off the necessary felt pieces of trim here uh, to get access to what we need on the side so let me start taking some of this apart and i'll bring you back one moment and welcome back so you can see we've got our lower panel removed this panel literally just completely lifts out of there so these little flaps in the front that come off the back of the seats you can see they've got velcro on them 
they just velcro in place you just pull those up and you can literally just grab that whole piece and pull it up and kind of set it out of the way and it looks like in order to get this side piece out of here closest to the battery so on the passenger side we can just start removing some christmas tree clips here peeling this piece back because it does overlap that piece a little bit actually may not be we may not even have to it looks like there's enough slack in here that we can just kind of manipulate and push this off to the side but it might be easier so i'll probably remove that one that one how many we have total so we've got two four five six okay so we may just end up removing all six of the christmas tree clips across this uh, cover that's around this trunk latch That'll get this centerpiece out of here and allow us to then start removing the Christmas tree clips and the other clips such as this one here which is used to help hold on the rear light, rear tail light. And we should then be able to get this piece kind of peeled back and out of the way and get access to what we need. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove this back felt piece here and this side piece and I'll bring you back one moment. And welcome back. Well, as you can see, we've got this uh, front trim piece peeled back, as well as that side felt piece. Also went ahead and took a couple of the Christmas tree clips off the top, just so we can kind of get a, a shot of maybe some of the mounting areas that we would potentially have for a GPS tracker. Because uh, uh, in their install video, they, they showed a charger, so the rear jump duck lid that they installed there is a little bit different than it is here in the challenger but it looks like we've got if you if you wanted to go this route you don't have to like i said they, they do give you quite a bit of length of cable that you can stick that gps tracker pretty much anywhere you want you just want to make sure it's not you know in the way of uh springs or hinges or anything but uh you got a couple of uh cavernous areas up underneath this deck lid if you choose to go here and you can actually gain access to a lot of this and reach it up in here without necessarily having to go inside the vehicle and remove that uh, that top deck lid. But you can if you want to. Just takes a little bit of extra work. Uh, now this side piece of trim here that was felt that was going this way, you can see we loosened it up and just kind of kicked it off to the side. It is still attached. And it kind of it has an attachment point here on the right that's behind the seat but there is enough flexibility it, it will allow you just to kind of push it uh, to gain access to what we need here which is that's what we need right there that's our fuel pump control module that we're going to be tapping into so the first thing that we're going to do is disconnect the negative battery cable and get that out of here and then we'll look at start making our positive connection, which is what they want you to do is just undo the, uh, I'll take the fuse cover off just to show you. That's gonna be our positive point. We're gonna undo that main bolt for that main battery positive cable and insert their eyelet there. And then we're gonna just gonna tap ground, it looks like off this existing ground screw that's back here. And that will be the two power connections we need. And then the harness for the fuel pump control module will get plugged in line with the factory harness that you see here. Okay, awesome. And then once we have that done, it will just be a matter of finding a place to put the GPS tracker, put it in a nice hidden location that will A, still allow it to operate and B, not be that easy to find. We'll have to poke around on a couple things just like with any other gps antenna you don't necessarily want it having a bunch of metal or something sitting on top of it and impeding its signal either way uh, let me get to work on just connecting this battery cable and start to get some wiring in here and i'll bring you back one moment and welcome back so we got our two wiring connection points done at least for power so we got our positive on our post here we got our negative on our existing battery negative post back here uh, and in case you're wondering and I actually saw this question come up on their install video is that one person had a question of uh, which which one of the wiring was positive and which one was negative and on the harness unfortunately it's not marked but you know no biggie no harm no foul um, 
at least on this harness and I would say on, on at least on this one because I, I can't speak for other ones but if you follow the main positive line here which also has a fuse in line with it because generally you're going to fuse on the positive side if you follow that down this nice red colored wire it's a little little bit difficult to see once it enters the nylon sheathing but that's going to be your your, your positive line because generally you're going to fuse on the positive side of things and their other line it being the the black colored line which again is kind of hard to see underneath this nylon sheathing but that's going to be our negative so at least in this wiring harness reds positive blacks negative so standard color codes apply and what we're in the process of doing right now let me get you some light so just realize it's kind of dark so once again just to show that to you we got our positive tied into here our negative tied into here and again you can see our red positive line comes up and hits that nice beefy chunky wiring along with the fuse and then enters the uh the relay so all i'm doing now is following the existing wiring harness you see here on the side and the back and they just zip tie into that and kind of getting things routed over to here where we're going to make the connection into the factory uh, fuel pump uh, control module uh, which will will plug the ghost harness into it and then we'll take the factory connector and plug it into the ghost harness into that y connection uh, that you see right here now you got a lot of wiring on this harness so it's kind of up to you as to where you want to place things but just keep in mind you want to make sure that you got enough slack on this smaller barrel connection here which is where your gps module uh, is going to plug into so as again as you can see just following the existing wiring harness around i'm going to make some make of this electrical connection into their harness uh, and then i'm going to do some final situation of, of wiring here and see if I can get things just to kind of maybe tuck up into this little corner and then kind of out of the way. Uh, maybe zip tie it to some existing mount points where these two modules are at uh, just to keep it, try to keep it off the floorboard so in case somebody's got something in here like they're using the trunk for storage space, you know, I don't want them inadvertently laying something on, on, on top of one of those relays and damaging it. Uh, but that's what I'm going to work on. Again, getting this connection made, doing doing a little bit more final wire routing, and I'll bring you back. One moment. And welcome back. So you can see like how, how we ended up here. Let me get you some light. Just kind of got everything just kind of zip tied and tucked together in this back corner. So we got the relay from the ghost harness, one of the fuses from the ghost harness, looks like to be the main fuse and of course you can see that we made our connection uh, into the ghost harness and to and from our fuel pump control module um, as well as our factory connector there now I went ahead and connected up our trackmate GPS module and on this connection it's probably gonna be hard to see on the camera but there's a couple of arrows that you line up because this connector is keyed and just make sure that you get it good and seated now what I'm going to do just for the purposes of activation is before we put this in its final location, go ahead and apply battery power and finish the activation of this unit. Verify that all the communication is good and then we'll find a final place, a hidden place to put our, uh, our GPS module, GPS slash disable module. So what I'm going to do next is get the battery connected get that secured back down uh, and then go in uh, via the pc and finish the activation process and then once i can see it within the software then i'll bring you back and we'll come back and, and button this up so one moment and welcome back well i went to check it and lo and behold apparently it'll activate itself Went in to check the account and it already saw the unit and already checked itself off as being finishing activation and showing as being installed. So uh, they were saying originally it was the step I would have to do, but I guess they've changed things and now it does it on its own. So the TrackMate, again, the TrackMate software sees the module in our account. It actually sees our report currently reporting our location. So we're going to kind of let it do its thing. And while it continues to run, what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and finish getting this routed.
hidden in a location it needs to be hidden in uh, and then go ahead and start just start putting our fabric and our other accessories back into place so all of this is just reverse removal it was just push pins that held it in if you take any of the push pins out of the top like we did here uh, at least on this particular model of challenger they're a little bit longer the ones that go into the the deck lid for this trim are that those and the ones that went around for the skirt around the sides are the the shorter ones here so let me get to work on that let me get this where it needs to be uh, and i'll bring you back one moment and welcome back sorry i've got to talk a little bit loud to speak over the exhaust of this hellcat as you can hear and see we have it running and i'm not going to show you the software because it kind of has gps and will show my location i don't need that all over the world but what i'm going to do to show you here is i'm going to use the fuel pump option with the tracker running and we're going to kill the fuel pump via the app and see if it works it does see the vehicle it is see a gps update so it's happy with where we put the tracker let's see if it works we're going to disable it now status updated successfully now we wait And as you can hear, that was it. It killed the fuel pump. Perfect. So now what we want to do is we're going to go back into the app. Sorry, I'm still screaming at you. We're going to re-enable the fuel pump. It says status updated successfully. I'm going to give it a few minutes here to realize that we have re-enabled it. Oop. got a badge in remember we got ghost power there we go got power back to our button and i can already hear the fuel pump priming so what i'm going to do since we cut it well it was in mid operation i'm just going to give it another key cycle here so it primes that fuel pump and as you can hear we're back in business so awesome, working as designed. And so now we can track the vehicle at its location. Let me shut this off because it's going to get kind of loud. And yes, it is a six speed manual. Uh, so as we covered, we now have the ability of the GPS track the vehicle. We now have the ability to remotely disable the vehicle. And if I remember the documentation correctly, even if they disconnect that battery, that GPS transponder will still work for a period of time. Again, even with the vehicle's battery disconnected. So we can track it now. We can disable it if need be now. And as you just saw, you probably just heard the beep. And now that we've got ghost power uh, in, con in ghost power disable enabling our start button in conjunction with ghost lock which is now tracking and able to disable the ve vehicle we've added yet another layer of security so let me pause you and get things uh finished and cleaned back up back there and i'll bring you right back one moment and welcome back you can see we got everything put back into place we got our liner put back in place our bottom boards and on that bottom board just to show you again the those little velcro flaps that come off the back seat so just put your bottom board back in and velcro your flaps in of course we use a trunk liner around here to protect the trunk and of course that's why you see the floor mats here is because we're also using the weather tech floor mats up front but that's beside the point but as you can see with everything put back in, much like their Ghost Power product, the Ghost Lock product, it doesn't look like anything's been done. Everything uses the factory connectors. Everything's wrapped like a, like a proper factory loom would be. So even if you were to pull all this back, at first you might look at it and think, oh, well, that's just part of the factory system. But again, as you can see, with everything put back in place, 
it's like nothing was here like no one's been here like nothing has been done and that's the the point behind the products but with that being said if you have subscribed already i do thank you immensely if not please consider doing so we're aiming for that 3,000 subscriber goal by the end of the year i hope this video has been helpful to you and uh, hold on tight because we got quite a few more things lined up in the pipeline we'll be bringing your direction and with that being said i'll let you go and I'll bring you back for the next one. Thank you much.